I'm gonna share several critical things about prolonged fasting that you need to know. Fasting is very simple, okay? It shouldn't be that hard. Some people overthink it. And those things that are really simple are usually extremely powerful. And that's what fasting is. I mean, it's actually mind blowing to think that the absence of food, just not eating, can create so many powerful effects. And if you haven't tried it, you should definitely try it. In order to understand the benefits of fasting, you wanna compare it to um, another subject and usually a subject that would be the opposite, okay? And that would be snacking, okay? If you look at what snacking does to the human body, it is absolutely positively devastating. In fact, I think out of all the things that you can do that create a negative influence on your body, snacking is at the top of the list because of what it does to insulin. It's a chronic increase in elevation of insulin, which then leads to just a million other problems. I mean, when you think about it, I guess I'll just pull this up right here real quick. I don't think you can ever heal the body with eating frequent meals, okay? We have this idea that you have to heal the body with food, right? Like food is nourishing. Actually, it might be nourishing, but to really heal, you're better off not eating. Um, this idea that breakfast is the most important meal is a total lie. And I used to promote it before I learned otherwise. What about promoting like bedtime snacks for kids, right? Or after school snacks, or this advice that you should never miss a meal, right? Which I have no idea who started that. Well, actually I do. It's the uh, snack food industry that started that. And for some reason, this uh, snacking food industry just doesn't like me for some reason. I don't know why it is. So if we look at snacking, snacking actually makes you more hungry because you're eating a small amount of calories and you're stimulating insulin and that lowers your blood sugar about an hour and a half later. So you're going to stimulate hunger, not stimulate your metabolism, okay? You're gonna stimulate hunger when you snack and it's gonna promote more hunger, okay? So, and you're never ever going to fix hypoglycemia by eating these snacks because it just, it keeps that hypoglycemic low blood sugar thing going on and on and on. In fact, it actually slows your metabolism, or shall I say, slows your ability to lose weight because you develop insulin resistance because you have this constant increase of insulin. And also it's gonna promote a need for a nap, okay? Right after you eat, you're gonna feel like you need a nap. And you may find that eating does reduce moodiness and grouchiness, but soon after, about an hour later, when your blood sugars are dropped, you're gonna revert back to this moodiness. Now in history, a lot of great thinkers have commented on fasting and had something to say about fasting. Hippocrates said, to eat when you are sick is to fuel your illness. Fascinating, right? And then we have the ancient Greek philosophers, right? The great thinkers. Pythagoras. Pythagoras required fasting of his students, okay? So they can think more clearly. Plato, Aristotle were advocates of fasting. Ben Franklin said the best of all medicine is rest and fasting. Mark Twain said, a little starvation can really do more for the average sick person than the best medicine and the best doctors. And another very interesting point about your fat, okay, your adipose tissue. Where did it come from? Why did we develop this fat tissue that you hate so much? Well, we developed it from scarcity of food, okay, food scarcity. And what this fat really is, it's, a, it's an efficient way of surviving. It's a way to make your energy very efficient. And when some people express that they have a damaged or slow or ruined metabolism, what they really have is an efficient metabolism because now the body can go with just a little bit of food for long periods of time and that fat is retained. So fat is all about prolonging fuel. It's all about helping you survive when there's no food. So therein lies the secret to losing fat, okay? Can you do it by adding more food, by eating something? No, you want to mimic why we developed it in the first place. We want to mimic starvation, but not really starvation. I want to actually kind of 
clarify what I mean by mimic, okay? The difference between fasting and starvation really has to do with one thing, control. Who's in control? When you're fasting, you're in control. When you're starving, you're usually being controlled by the environment because there's no food. So if we were gonna mimic starvation, we're really being in control because we could eat if we want, right? And so the secret to getting rid of your fat really is just to do prolonged fasting, okay? The power of prolonged fasting is just remarkable for your health. So let's go through the seven critical things that you need to know, okay? The first thing I wanna mention is that when you do fasting, um, you really only wanna drink water. You can have tea. You can have some coffee, but you definitely want to take supplements. And the reason is because nowadays people are so deficient in nutrients. So even though when you go through fasting, your body adapts and becomes very efficient at holding nutrients and the requirement of nutrients is a lot less, you could still have certain deficiencies of both trace minerals, especially, and other things like electrolytes and uh, even the B vitamins. So I recommend taking your supplements. And the two main categories of supplements I would recommend are the electrolytes and the B vitamins. But of course, if you can also do some other ones like um, vitamin D, vitamin C, that would be important. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna do like branch chain amino acids. You don't wanna have little snacks. No, you don't wanna do that. And there are some programs that promote that, but I don't recommend that because what you're going to do is you're going to inhibit this very powerful thing that gives you huge benefits, okay? Called autophagy. What is that? That is a condition. It's not a thing. It's a condition in your body that basically recycles old damaged proteins, okay? So fasting is the most potent trigger to autophagy. And so autophagy is kind of like self-cleaning. It's cleaning up the old dead proteins. It's cleaning up pathogens in the body. It's stimulating all sorts of genes for long-term survival and longevity. It helps to clean up damaged mitochondria, which is directly behind the root cause of cancer. So this is why prolonged fasting is the best solution to cancer. And uh, if you have not seen my videos on two amazing success stories with cancer, um, like stage four cancer, I'm, I'm going to put those down below, but it's very powerful. So autophagy is a condition where you're recycling like damaged protein. I'm talking about like amyloid placking that's involved in Alzheimer's, I'm talking about the, um, the damaged protein involved in chronic disease, like in your eyes, like from diabetes, from chronic inflammation. And, and by the way, when you start doing prolonged fasting, you can just erase any inflammation in the body. And it's amazing for autoimmune type conditions as well. So we're recycling damaged proteins, not just your muscles, but proteins involved in the enzymes, the all the different metabolic pathways, the things that are damaged, it cleans all that up. So just make sure you do uh, your water, you know, a couple other things like tea and coffee and your supplements, but nothing else, okay? Um, the other thing I'm gonna bring up is the amount of water. Uh, I would recommend at least two and a half liters of water. Now there are dry fast and that's a whole different thing. But for most of you watching, I, I don't recommend you do that. You do a water fast. So you're basically drinking a good amount of water. Um, <laughs> what's interesting about doing a fast, your body will make its own water out of fat, but that's for another video. I just recommend you drink enough water. And the reason I recommend you drink water is when you start fasting, boy, you just dump your glycogen, okay? The, your stored sugar, and you're burning up the sugar first. Uh, and then with that, um, is the release of a lot of fluids because you have a tremendous amount of water that's tied in with this stored uh, blood sugar in your muscles and your, in your liver. So you're going to get rid of a good amount of fluid initially. And with that comes a loss of electrolytes. So you want to put back in those electrolytes. Probably the biggest risk of doing these fast, okay, is when you're doing them without electrolytes because uh, you can create a lot of problems with your heart, 
you can you can faint you can even have heart attacks why because you're you're basically depriving your body of key uh, electrolytes and realize that sodium chloride is also part of electrolytes okay so you need salt and other electrolytes um, if you feel weakness in your muscles that is an indication that you need more salt okay and of course i'm talking about sea salt and with electrolytes i'm also talking about potassium magnesium calcium things like that now let's go into number three refeeding this is when you start to eat again now i'm not talking about intermittent fasting right now i'm talking about prolonged fasting when you're fasting 48 72 hours you're fasting five days you're fasting, you know, 14 days, 21 days, 30 days, whatever. And you could do a five day or even a 21 day fast several times through the year and just keep your health at a whole new level. Um, the, some of the problems with fasting that I want to bring up is like, you don't want to do fasting when you're pregnant, when you're lactating. Um, you don't want to do fasting if you have anorexia. However, if you have stage four cancer or cancer in general, um, personally, I would do prolonged fasting immediately. So if you're doing a prolonged fast, all right, um, what do you eat coming off the fast? Well, you wanna do um, something healthy, of course, uh, but you don't wanna do a big meal, okay? And you especially do not wanna do something with refined carbs and sugar. And the reason is because you're gonna create a huge shift of potassium, okay, um, out of the cell. And 98% of all your potassium should be inside that cell. And so in order to store sugar, you need potassium. So you're going to just suck out this potassium too fast. And you're going to end up with a severe um, imbalance uh, of potassium in the blood, inside the cell, there's going to be this huge imbalance, and that can create some dangers. So do not do, you know, just regular foods or refined carbs when you come off this prolonged fast. Instead, do a little bit of salad, maybe a little egg, uh, just a little bit of uh, something, and then wait for a couple hours. And then you can maybe have a little bit of nuts and uh, wait for a little bit, do a little avocado and gradually kind of come out of this. Okay. You do not want to do a big meal. Um, like I did. And that was a really good demonstration of what not to do because I just pigged out, I ate all this food, ate this huge meal. And oh my goodness, did I end up with a serious uh, digestive problem, tired. And I'm like, okay, I will never do that again. I, in fact, I need to have other people learn from my mistakes. All right. If you're doing a prolonged fast, and I'm saying probably 72 hours or longer, realize that all these ketones are going to make you pretty acid. It's not a bad thing. It's just that if you're doing apple cider vinegar and you're adding that, you're going to add some uh, more acidity and that can throw off your pH. And you may find that your, your pulse rate, it's like a very loud pounding pulse rate in your ear. That's going to make it difficult to sleep because your pH is off and your breathing might be affected too, like, like air hunger, like can't get enough air. So don't, just don't do the apple cider vinegar if you're doing a fast longer than 72 hours. You may want to do some baking soda, just a little bit, like a, an eighth of a teaspoon in some water and drink that, especially if you start having a buildup of uh, like a gout symptom from the uric acid that goes up. Uric acid is one of the most powerful antioxidants in your blood, and it's a normal thing, but some people that are predisposed to gout uh, might have a flare-up, especially when they are doing this initially, okay? But normally it's not a situation. And number five, do the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. Don't just go back to regular foods because first of all, the carbs are going to kind of nullify some of the benefits that you had, okay? Because this, this whole goal of doing fasting is to get rid of the bad effects of a high carb diet and a junk food diet. So why would you wanna go back to that? So I would highly recommend combining healthy keto with the intermittent fasting. Okay, number six, dawn phenomenon. What is that? That has to do with your blood sugars going up, okay? Maybe between five in the morning to eight, like all of a sudden your blood sugars go up and like you didn't eat any sugar. Where is that sugar coming from? Well, your liver is making sugar, okay? There's a problem 
with insulin resistance, which is still occurring because it takes a, a, quite a while to get rid of that condition. It could take months, even up to a year or a little bit longer to fully get rid of that. If you have the Dawn phenomenon, all that means is that you have insulin resistance, okay? And I wouldn't worry about it too much. However, if it concerns you, I would go for a long walk and just burn off that sugar. Uh, it's not coming from your diet, okay? It's just your liver is making the sugar. And that's a, a big difference between consuming sugar, all right? It's, you're not gonna have a problem. And also that problem is gonna go away with time versus some people might think, oh, fasting is bad because it raised my sugar, so I'm gonna stop doing that. That would be a mistake. And so a couple of little things that you can do, you can probably take berberine or other things like cinnamon to help um, reduce insulin resistance, okay? All right, number seven, knowing when to break your fast. Now, should you just dive right into a prolonged fast? Well, you know what, you could, you could. Are you gonna feel great? Maybe not, especially if you haven't fasted, you're gonna to have to go through a period of time where your body adapts. And so it might take you several days before you start feeling good. Um, so a lot of people do this gradually and they kind of ease into it after doing you know, weeks of intermittent fasting. So you could just cold turkey, just jump right in and do prolonged fasting, okay? However, when you start fasting, what you're really doing is you're switching from the glucose fuel to the fat fuel, okay? And then also the body then has to make new enzymes for ketones, okay? So your body actually is running on fatty acids as well as ketones, especially for your brain. Your brain can't run on fatty acids. It runs on ketones. So just think about this. You're not gonna feel really good in your head when you start doing fasting simply because it takes a while to develop ketones. So in the meantime, what you could do is take uh, MCT oil or you can take ketone supplements and get rid of those symptoms. However, um, you may not feel good mentally um, at first, but then you start adapting and your appetite goes away and you feel good. That's a really good indication that you've adapted. Okay, so if you're doing this gradual, okay, there's always gonna be a transition phase where it's gonna, you're gonna have to go through something that's gonna be uncomfortable. But just realize, push through that. Like you might have hunger pains, you might feel um, a little bit kind of off, but then if you push through that, that will go away because your body has, is forced to adapt to this new method of burning fuel. There's no other shortcuts other than just pushing through that sometimes. So at some point going from intermittent fasting to prolonged fasting, you're gonna have to go through a little bit of this transition. It's normal, it's not abnormal. Um, I'm just letting you know before you go through it so you can not be freaked out about it. But when I say don't eat if you're not hungry, eat when you're hungry, um, I'm mainly talking about doing intermittent fasting. But when we get into prolonged fasting, should you eat when you're hungry? Uh, no, actually, we're gonna just push through that to the other side, okay? So that's kind of a little bit of a, a little point I wanna bring up. Now, since we're on the topic of fasting, I think it'd be very important for you to learn a little bit more about how to speed up the process, and that would be how to make insulin more sensitive. So you should watch this video right here.